All right, before we start looking at stoichiometry, a key thing that you need to be good at is to be able to write chemical equations. Now, I'm assuming that you've done that before in, in other chemistry classes, and so this will just be a quick review. Um, if going through this review, you're sort of blown away and you're going, ah, um, I would encourage you to talk to your instructor. Also refer to your textbook that has uh, lots of questions on how to write equations um, and also balance them. Okay, so this would be a quick review, uh, but ho and hopefully it is a re review. If it seems like it's something new, please get a hold of your instructor. So when we're doing stoichiometry, uh, we'll see lots of times where we'll have a question, and we need to be able to identify what kind of reaction is happening. So here's a bunch of different kinds. Single replacement, combustion, double replacement, simple decomposition. And we need to be able to recognize uh, what kind of reaction is happening. In order to write the reaction, or write the, um, the reactants anyway, but also we'll, be, uh, we'll need to be able to write the products for those. So I'd like to just go uh, through each one separately and just quickly review what they look like and what to expect for products. First one is combustion. That's probably the easiest one. If you ever see the word combustion, typically it means that it's burning something in oxygen, and typically the products are carbon dioxide and water. Certainly if we burn something like methane, or if we burn something like glucose, or if we burn something like octane, C8, H18, all three of those, when you burn them in the presence of oxygen, they'll produce carbon dioxide and water. There are other types of combustion that don't include hydrocarbons, but um, uh, typically if you see a combustion reaction, it'll look like this. Notice that I have a fuel, and that's the only thing that changes is in the whole thing. So I have some kind of a fuel, and then it burns in oxygen, always producing carbon dioxide and water. So if you see combustion, and that's the reaction that's happening, you can write this whole thing immediately, and then just worry about what fuel you're using uh, to burn. Okay? Now, we'll deal with uh, a balancing later, but uh, um, this would be, if I see a combustion, something, say, ethane is combusting. I would write est ethane. There's the formula for ethane. And if it's a um, combustion reaction, it'll be plus O2 yields CO2 plus water. Okay? So that is um, uh, the reaction, combustion reaction. Another type of re reaction is something called a simple decomposition. So decomposition sort of lends itself to the idea that it's breaking things down. And certainly in this example, I've got water. And then I'm breaking it down into hydrogen. I'm sort of splitting it. So I have hydrogen and I have oxygen. Notice over here that hydrogen, instead of writing it just as plain hydrogen, I wrote it as it appears when it is um, uh, not reacted with any other chemical. So hydrogen is a diatomic element or diatomic molecule. And so you write it always as H2 when it's by itself. Similar with oxygen, I wrote it as O2. Notice that the two, the numbers here um, and the numbers over here don't have to match. Like over here, if I break it up, I write hydrogen, I write oxygen. Then I'd have to worry later about balancing things. And the balancing will take care of that uh, later. Here's an example of, of this actual um, reaction. If you take water and you... Um, uh, zap it with electricity, uh, you can break it into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Just make sure you don't have a, a spark close. Another type of reaction is simple composition. Notice this reaction is exactly reverse of the one that we just did. But in this case, we're taking hydrogen and oxygen and reacting them to form or compose water. So it's simple composition. Next one is single replacement. Single, that means one thing is moving or one thing is replacing. 
In this example, I have magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid. So magnesium is by itself here. It looks like it's going to go in and replace either the hydrogen or it's going to replace the chlorine. To be able to tell which, it, which it's going to replace is I can look on the chart. Magnesium as an ion is, uh, is a positive ion. So if it's going to replace anybody, it's got to replace a positive guy. So this guy will replace a positive guy. So over here, hydrogen is a positive, chlorine is a minus. So magnesium, it can't replace the chlorine because that would make a, um, a magnesium and hydrogen two, two pluses together. It can't have that. So I have to, the magnesium, which is positive, will replace the other positive uh, entity there. So, on the other side, then, magnesium will be bonded with chlorine, and uh, hydrogen will be left on its own. Notice when it's on its own, it's always written as H2. Also, notice that here I have magnesium with the chlorine, and I have a 2 there. Um, this would be a good time to, I guess, uh, also encourage you to look back, and if you're having trouble writing formulas for compounds, you may want to review that uh, in your textbook or ask your instructor. Essentially, the magnesium was a 2 plus ion, the chlorine is a minus, and so in order to balance those charges, I need two chlorines, and that's where the two come from. That's single replacement. Another one, uh, double replacement, or in this particular uh, example, it's an acid-base reaction. I have a base sodium hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid. Another name for this type of reaction would be a neutralization uh, reaction. Um, notice in here, the double replacement thing, what happens is that here I have a sodium, which is a positive ion. Here I have a hydroxide, which is a minus ion. Over here I have a hydrogen, positive. Sulfate, if you look on your complex ions, that's a minus. And then, so what I have to do is it's a double replacement, so everybody switches. So right now, sodium is with, hooked up with this minus. So in a double replacement, sodium goes and hangs out with the other minus. So on this side, I have sodium sulfate. I think the formula written down here is, well, the formula written is incorrect. Let's just confirm that. Sulfate is a 2 minus. Sodium is a 1 plus. In order to balance those charges, I need two pluses. Therefore, I need two sodiums because each one gives me one plus. Okay, so if sodium went with sulfate, that means this hydrogen must go with the hydroxide. And the hydrogen, when it hooks up with hydroxide, forms water. Okay, double replacement reaction. Again, practice these and look, look at them at uh, and, and try and make sure you're confident writing the equations. The last sort of type that we'll look at is something called an other equation. And it's one where, if it's an other equation, one that doesn't fall within the normal ones, uh, we call it other. There's probably a name for it. Like this one looks like a complicated decomposition reaction. But if I have an other reaction, we'll always give you what all the products are. So we won't make you figure out what the products are. Okay, so this is an other reaction. So just as a little uh, thing that you might want to try, you may want to pause the video and go through and see if you can identify what types of reactions all of these will be. Okay, pause, see if you can identify them, and then come back and see if you're right. Okay, hopefully you're, you, <laughs> you've taken a look at these and hopefully figured out what kind they are. This first one would be a single replacement. The next one would also be a single replacement. Next guy would be a combustion. This one would be a combustion. This one, since it's all written out for us, it's probably an other. This one, I only have one compound here and it's going to something. It's probably going to be a decomposition. Here I've got phosphoric acid, barium hydroxide. That's going to be a double replacement or an acid-base neutralization. This last one here, I have an, an element here and a compound here. This one's going to be a single replacement. Okay, hopefully you did uh, okay on there. Hopefully 8 out of 8. 
Um, now, one thing that I'll do too, and if you want, you can pause again. I'll just write down what the products of each of these are. Uh, if you want to try that on your own, you can. Um, uh, if not, just listen and, and see if it makes sense. So here, lead uh, is a, uh, a positive ion. It's going to replace the hydrogen. So I'm going to get P, B, and I. Iodine is a 1 minus. Lead can be a 2 or it can be a 4. And I think the preferred is 4 plus. So this uh, compound, I need 4 of these minuses. Therefore, the formula would be PBI4. Okay, plus, I'm not going to worry too much about states uh, right now. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with the equations. Plus, hydrogen gets left out in the cold. Whenever hydrogen is listed by itself, it'd be H2. Another single replacement, calcium's a plus, aluminum's a plus. So it'll replace it. Uh, so it'll be calcium sulfate plus aluminum by itself. Calcium's a 2 plus, sulfate's a 2 minus. This formula is correct. Combustion always produces CO2 and water. That's an easy one. Notice I haven't balanced any of these, but that's something that we would need to do as well. Another combustion, CO2 plus water. Here's another one. Uh, I guess we could uh, try and balance it. Uh, let me just try that. I don't know if it'll work or not, but here I have four nitrogens. I need a four there. That gives me, I also have 12 hydrogens. Here I've already got eight, so I need another four hydrogens. Uh, so if I put a two there, that gives me four hydrogens. There, that one's balanced. This one here, it's a decomposition, so it's going to break into its elements. So phosphorus plus oxygen. Now phosphorus is an interesting one. It's not a P2, but it often exists in different uh, um, configurations. So I think it can exist as a P4 or a P8 might be, uh, but there's lots of different configurations for phosphorus. If you were given this question um, uh, as an example, they would tell you which configuration of phosphorus it went to. Okay, here's the acid base one, double replacement. The hydrogen goes with the OH to form water, and then the barium would go with the phosphate to form barium phosphate. Now, barium is a 2 plus, phosphate's a 3 minus. So in order to get the charges to balance, I think that I need three of those, and I think I need two of those. So two phosphates at 3 minus would give me a 6 minus, and three bariums at 2 plus would give me a 6 plus, yet those charges balance, meaning that that formula is correct. Last but not least, bromine. Bromine is a negative ion. Iodine is a negative ion. So bromine will replace iodine. So I'm going to have um, an iodine will be left out by itself. So iodine gets left by itself. It's another one of those diatomic elements. And then I have iron hooked up with bromine. Now I know bromine is a 1 minus. And iron from here... Since iodine's a 1 minus, iron must be plain as a 3 plus. So if it's plain a 3 plus here, it'll be plain as a 3 plus over here. So if iron is a 3 plus and bromine's a 1 minus, I need three of these guys to balance that charge out. So I need to put a 3 there. Okay, hopefully that gave you a quick little review of balance or of writing chemical equations. It's real essential that you practice that and make sure you're good at writing uh, the equations down. If you have troubles, contact your instructor, and there's lots of places where you can get extra practice.